Okay. Uh, so the first step of meditation, of course, is to turn off your cell phone. And if you could please leave it off for the remainder of the class. And we're going to do tonight's meditation in two parts. And so we'll begin with breath meditation, as we usually do. So find the meditation posture, as many of you have heard me say. It's that posture that's comfortable enough that you don't need to move and not so comfortable that you'll fall asleep. So the more alert you are, the more comfy you can get, and vice versa, the sleepier you are. The more you should sit in a posture that would be uncomfortable or mildly unsafe to fall asleep in. And once you've found your posture, bring your attention to the breath. And a few times in this series, I've talked about two different types of focusing. The standard one, which takes a little bit of effort, and the one we would particularly use to try to enter jhana, where you go into an open awareness and just kind of uh, enjoy or care about the breath. D tonight, we'll actually use the, that first one. So it's, it's pretty much the normal way of focusing on the breath. Bring it into the center of your attention. And when you notice it's not there anymore, put it back. Trying to block anything out of the background will get you super lost. If you're more advanced, sometimes you won't notice the outside sounds, and that can be okay not to hear the fan from the heater and the people outside and so on. But particularly if you try to stop the voice in your head, or if you're in that minority where you get images more so than a voice, trying to stop that's going to get you super lost. So in the very same way that it's easy to hear that the heater's on and the fan's on and just ignore it and listen to me. We use this same attitude, the same skill towards any distractions besides the breath. So the idea is to keep the breath in the front of your attention rather than let it completely take over your attention. Working with the mind, you could think of a spectrum from, on one hand, caring entirely about the content. You know, what are you feeling? Why are you feeling it? What might make it better? The under, other end of the spectrum, completely ignoring the content. And we're, we're pretty much all the way at that end of the spectrum here. If something is so loud that you're like, basically breaking a sweat to stay on the breath. You, you do need to go to that thing until it gives you enough space to come back. But to whatever degree possible, our goal is to keep 
just the breath and the attention and to try actually not care about what else is going on in the body and in the mind. <clears throat> of course, this isn't a life philosophy. Hopefully no one would suggest that you should never care about what's going on in your mind and body. But it's a pretty helpful skill to sometimes just let it all be there. And feel very relaxing <clears throat> to see all of your problems and not do anything about them. Try playing around with the amount of effort you're using. For most people, the amount you want to use is not zero. They'll just space out in the beginning at least. But less than you think you need. So what I would play with is, is just briefly put in too much. Really grab the breath. It'll give you a headache, so just very briefly. And then put in none. And then play around in the middle there, where the, the goal is to be as relaxed as you can while still caring enough, putting in enough intention and effort that you're keeping the breath in the middle. There's not one set point. The better of a state your mind is in, the less effort you're going to need to exert. And probably your mind state's going to change a bunch of times just in this 40 minutes.
as I wind up saying most weeks, let those outside sounds be your mindfulness bell. Sometimes I find it pretty hard to put my breath in the front and my very important, very urgent thoughts in the background. I find it really easy to put my breath in the front and the music from passing cars in the background. And so we'll do this for a few more minutes. And the main goal I'd set for the next few minutes, besides putting your breath back in the center when it gets lost, is trying to minimize the amount of effort you're using. Not too low. But as we get deeper into the meditation, more relaxation is usually going to cause you to focus better. Most of the time, spending the time in meditation makes the mind work a little better, makes the correct set point on effort lower.
So we'll move into phase two here. And for phase two, posture is gonna be more important than usual. Posture and stillness. You know, if you have a jacket on and you get too warm, just be warm. You know, if you have an itch, try not to scratch it. Try to keep a good posture and stay still. If your mind is still feeling pretty messy, I would keep going with the breath attention. Another thing you could try is the, the shikantaza practice. It's about midway between the breath attention and what I'm going to suggest for phase two. The shikantaza practice is anytime the attention uh, grabs onto something too hard, release it. Um, many of you have heard Michael Taft from the Alembic teach this. He calls it like opening the fist or dropping the ball, just releasing. If your mind feels kind of messy, I would do one of those two. Keep going with the breath of the shikantaza. If your mind's feeling reasonably okay, what I would do is hold your posture and otherwise completely stop. Don't do any meditation. Hold your posture and basically waste your time. Every teacher is gonna to talk to you about the importance, at least sometimes, of letting go of effort. It turns out that's a pretty hard thing to do. If your mind's a mess, it's a pretty counterproductive thing to do. But uh, I asked all 18 of us if anyone thought 40 minutes would be a long sit, and everyone said no. And I know most of you here have done retreat, and a good chunk just came off retreat with me last week. Well, I'm sure this isn't true of everyone. It's true of quite a number of us that we spend a good chunk of time meditating. And when you spend a good chunk of time meditating, this complete cessation of effort can be a pretty or super useful thing to do. This may require some faith in me that uh, I'm, I'm not just doing this for kicks, that uh, uh, total non-striving for the remainder of the sit really is a helpful thing to do. So if you wanna try this non-striving, really don't do anything. If your mind gets stuck in silly conversations, just let it, doesn't matter. The only thing that really matters is that you're wasting your time, not trying to be productive, not trying to meditate, not trying to get anything. You can see why posture and stillness are important for this. The attitude of wasting your time, it's like being online at the post office Like when you hear that message, your call is very important to us. It will be answered in the order it was received. Your wait time is 44 minutes. You get that feeling where you're not going to do anything. You're going to relax and waste your time until the representative picks up.
I've guided this meditation a few times before, and one thing I like to do is ring a bell uh, for no reason. There's a little bit of a reason. Meditators hear the bell. We stop meditating. You can think of stopping as going into a state of passivity. We'll keep the posture good. We won't go into a total state of passivity. But in meditation, you're usually trying to decide what should happen in the mind. And here you are not. Sometimes you're trying to just let the mind do its thing as you try to cultivate mindful awareness. And, and here you're not. One thing that will sometimes happen if you try to actually just stop and waste your time and sit here is thoughts about progress and technique and the importance of getting somewhere. Those are helpful to uproot. There's several beneficial things about trying this practice from time to time, and, and that's one of them. Just letting those thoughts about progress and technique and success, just letting them kind of yell themselves out. <laughs> 